What up, everyone? Welcome to El Corazón. Where the past inspires and the present connects. Straight like that. Man, we're so excited today uh, to be with you. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We're doing this for the Hispanic culture, and what a blessing and a treat that we have here today. We've been anticipating, praying, meeting uh, for for a time such as this for today. Very special, special day for us, especially as we are you know, have been launching out El Corazón, and we, we have to look back because it inspires us. It connects us to the present day. And when you look back, oh, my goodness, most everyone that we talk to when we're talking about media in Central Texas with the Hispanic culture, I mean, absolutely no one is going to not think about um, the Tiempo mm. newspaper. That is nostalgic on steroids when you're from Central Texas. You're talking about quinceañeras. You're talking about if you need a lawyer. You're talking about birthdays. You're talking about churches. You're talking about all the different things that make up who we are. Advertising, uh, politics, you name it. Everything that's a part of who we are that's important to us was always in the Tiempo newspaper. Wow. And so uh, today, what a treat. We have Ernesto, Ernesto Fraga. Um, er, hold on, we want to say Ernesto Luis Fraga. That's right. All right, which is, you know, obviously the son of Ernesto Fraga Sr. And uh, my goodness, if you know, then you know. That's what we say nowadays. Man. If you know, then you know. What an honor. What a, what a, um, oh, I'm serious, man. What a privilege to be able to be here before you to talk about uh, such a vital centerpiece of our culture in Central Texas when we're talking about the Hispanic heritage. And so, uh, man, welcome to the show, man. Man, honor's all mine. You know, this is, uh, I just appreciate the acknowledgement, uh, the opportunity to be here. It's awesome. Johnny, we were talking a few minutes ago. Um, can you remind everyone about this concept, right? Um, I feel like God had, had been putting this in my heart but it's been, it had been on the shelf, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of being able to be a, a mouthpiece for our culture. In fact, part of uh, one of our slogans is, you know, we're the heartbeat of the Hispanic culture. And when you came to me with this, can you explain, like, I think it's relevant, especially now that we have Ernesto sitting in front of us, right? Um, how does all came about, right? Because that is when you said what you said back then, it rang bells. I'm like, that makes sense. I've been wanting to do something. I just needed some initiation. And here you came with that initiation, but something initiated you. Can you talk about that? Yeah, the, 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 how this all started, it, again, an honor for you to be here. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, man. This, this don't happen without you and your dad, mm. period. Mm -hmm. but, so, Straight like that. Yeah, so the Waco And mom. And mom. Without your whole family, your sis sister, every, I mean, you're, whenever your dad has to put that much work into something, mm -hmm. the whole family's involved, whether they like it or not. You give credit to the whole family because they had to put up with the hours he wasn't there or printing and all. That was a whole big deal. I remember took, the printing. Took a lot. Took I a remember lot. the printing. And we're going to talk about that yeah. too. That's going to be yeah. good. You're talking about hours and the heat. But, <clears throat> but where this all came from was basically um, people calling around, always asking to use my social media to, to help them promote what they were doing, whether it be a dance, whether it be a house for sale, where it be. The, um, and, and they were just like, man, we don't have any uh, uh, voice, no, no, no voice, you know, and, and, the, and the thing that would come out right after that would be um, we don't have the tiempo no more. You mm -hmm. know, like that, 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 that was the biggest thing of, of the whole thing because that that put the root of it. Yeah. And you, you were saying you were uh, at a uh, uh, with a business partner mm -hmm. and uh, one of the folks that was working for your business partner. Can you show that story? Remember, they, they came to, you know, asking about, you know, when is something like this is going to happen, right? Didn't you have... Yeah, they kept they kept pushing it, and, and, they, and they kept wanting me to do it. And, and first of all, I was like, man, I don't even... I got to I gotta see if they're going to... Y'all talking about just start the temple. You can't just use somebody else's name and run with it, right? So yeah. I didn't know that, that, that the logistics of it. I, I knew we had... I thought we had the personnel to make it happen, I, I, but I never pulled this... Pulled this was years. This was like three years in the making, Mm, and, wow. and, and I don't know if I was ready to do it when I, when, when, when the making was happening. I'm glad that we've evolved to where we are today sure, sure. to be more mature and really grab, like really like today. You have no idea how, how honored and how cool it is to have known you for 20, 30 years. Mm. And then we come in this 
in this room and I'm excited to meet Mr. Frogger's son and it's you. Like, yeah. that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> like, that, we man. just talked at Home Depot yesterday yep. about a dance next week for the uh, Robles and them were doing the, the 80s dance. And, uh, yep. so, I'm glad you reminded me because we are going to that too. <laughs> see, see, so, so, it, that, so that was kind of cool. So I'm putting all this together as, the, as, as y'all are as well as we, as we, as we in, indulge in this conversation. Yeah, no, you know, um, it, you know, even talking about relationships and how this stuff work out, you know, uh, David Rodriguez, shout out to David yes, Rodriguez, sir. my brother-in-law, man. Yeah, you my know, homie. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, man. You know, he he helped facilitate and put some of this stuff together. By the way, I want to talk about that really quick. Uh, I remember we were sitting there, uh, David, you know, was with us, me, David, and and uh, Ernesto was sitting there talking. It was my first time meeting Ernesto. We were sitting there eating, and David sitting there, you know, trying to say, yeah, you know, this is this is him, and this is what, I'm just trying to help, and this and that. You know, David's going to be watching this. But, uh, and Ernesto looks at him in his eye, and he goes, what, what did you, do you remember what you told him? He said, what makes you think that you're you're not a part of it? That's right. <laughs> yeah, what did you tell him, bro? Well, it just had something to do with that, that uh, he's trying to say, I'm just here facilitating and helping y'all get together, didn't do it, all this great El Corazon. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, what makes you think you're not part of, of all of this, all of this that we're, that we're a part of? We're in this together, man. And, you know, It was a dope moment uh, for me as a brother-in-law because uh, I'm like, dude, I'm glad you said what I, I, I can't say. <laughs> So 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 anyway, it, it just kind of goes into how I look at things, how I look at life. You yeah, know? yeah. But anyway, that was a great moment. So shout out to David Rodriguez uh, for uh, you know putting helping to put all this together, and uh, um, you know through relationships that we have in the city in our community that really helps um, solidify things, right? Uh, so like El Corazón, you know we are um, you know arriving on the scene we see that there is a, a gap and we just so happen to have the some gifts and abilities and and skill sets and relationships and resources and we're saying okay well god we don't really know what we're doing necessarily mm-hmm. all together but we're stepping out in faith and uh we're not sure you know when we first started like we're not even sure that we're the people that's supposed to be do- i don't know right but right. but here we go and we're doing it because we can right and uh, you know, there's a lot, and, and there's a lot, and we want you to unpack a lot of this too. But there's a lot that goes into any kind of media that you do when you are, when you end up being a mouthpiece for your your culture, right? And so we we have taken this very serious, right? And we've had some very serious conversations. In fact, if you go back to the the first one we did with our introduction, we we we. You know, I don't think there was no we. You, 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 you put me under the bus, and we talked about how Johnny has changed. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we, we, by choice, by decision, and by purpose, we have said that we're going to jump off the cliff by faith and and do this to represent the Hispanic culture here in Central Texas. And that's no easy. That's nothing light that you take, right? So that means you know how you live and what you do. Um, it 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 reflects everybody now, right? Especially when you're you're daring to come out in media, and you know we're talking about the 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 heartbeat of the Hispanic culture. Uh, that that speaks volumes. But you got to walk that stuff out. You got to live that stuff. It has to be that serious uh, for you, uh, because if not, you can you cannot do that and take it serious in that way, and and it it tarnishes it it ruins you know what could be. And so for us, we take it very serious. And and on that note, being here with you and the legacy that your family has created, man, oh, my goodness, uh, we can't say this enough. Uh, it, it it blesses our hearts to be here with you, uh, to be able to talk with you, to be able to, uh, you know, we're kind of fanning out a little bit, right, about the legacy because it's very important to us, you know, as we talk about this. Uh, there's no way in the world we could even move forward without acknowledging, you know, could we even put that where the past inspires and the present connects? These things are so vital and important together that we acknowledge the past and especially the past that, that's, that's inspiring because it gives us what we need for today, right? Yep. We stand on the shoulders of giants, right? And your family mm. is one of those giants, giants right? And so, uh, again, I can't emphasize that enough but, but everything you just said bro like yeah. you when we were coming up with the name it, 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 you can't believe or we can't think like that or move forward 
if it ain't from La Corazon. Yeah, from the heart, yeah. And, 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 and that says everything, because, like, if you, you got to walk it, if you're going to talk it, you got to walk it, especially in the Hispanic culture. We're, we're going to hold you accountable. Ooh, <laughs> you already know. That's just what we do, right? <laughs> Somebody's going to be talking <laughs> about you. That's what You already know, man. So, like, if it ain't in La Corazon, you might as well not even step on that on that bridge, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, anyway, that that's our heart. Tama el corazón. That's our heart. That's our desire. And uh, I'm just so so grateful that uh, you know through the relationship that we just talked about, that we're able to come together and build some trust there. Uh, and thank you for entrusting us with with the legacy. We wanted to do it in a very professional way, uh, honoring you guys. And uh, uh, you know, we thank you for trusting us to be able to take that legacy and broadcast it in a way that uh, affirms who you guys are as a familia and that, that, that helps uh, create a time capsule, right? That can be there and we'll have it forever, right? That our kids and our kids' kids can see this and, yeah. and hear about it. So uh, anyway, that's some behind the scenes stuff yeah. we wanted to get out the way because we're gonna dive that's into this. That's important stuff, man. No, no, it, it is important. No, it's very and, important. And I appreciate where the past inspires and the present connects just because that's what it's all about is, mm. is inspiring everybody um, with the way you live your life, all of the movements you make, all of the heart that you bring into everything you do is what we want to pass on to everybody else mm. and know that it is important. You yeah. know, it's in, we're all important and, and there's a reason for all of this. That's right. But as you touched that, would you say that a little bit in our community the, from our Hispanic culture, that's kind of what we've kind of pulled away from recently a little bit? Like, I, w- I would say from what I understand and what I've learned um, growing up the way I did too, it's not necessarily that uh, we're we're losing it or we're forgetting it. I think there's always a time where we never even knew that kind of mindset. Amen. And a lot of a lot of the future too has learned and uh, had more understanding of uh, knowing your identity, knowing mm. the identity of our culture, uh, and and that is always evolving. And I think you're always taking on wherever you're from, whether it's the United States or somewhere else in the world. Just knowing that we're all in this together mm. and uh, knowing your identity ha- can can mean a lot of things. Mm. You know, who we are as a culture uh, and what other parts we say are our culture. And we're, and we're all taking from each other, you know, yeah. because we are all in, the, in this together as far as uh, which is one of the big themes that I uh you know, was taught to be brought up on that, yeah. uh, we, you know, being an isolationist and thinking that it's just me and uh, we need to take care of ourselves. You know, there's there's a lot mm. that goes into that when it comes to our families. But uh, I think having the broader perspective is important and what we always want to pass on to other people so that we're always looking out for um, everyone else and those who need us uh, mm. most. Mm. 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 No, that's awesome, man. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, let, let's start, man. Okay, uh, with, with with one of the questions. Let's start uh, on purpose here. Tell us about what it was like growing up. You know, uh, with your family being in media the way it was, because you shared uh, when we were conversating something about even your mom that I didn't realize, right? And David was sharing with me. So, can you just share from that whole point of view of your parents? It's hard to know where to begin. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as you can go back, we were, um, you know, we come from meager beginnings. Okay. Uh, I think uh, just um, if you know my parents and and their history, it starts from uh, fighting for um, civil rights and uh, causes from since uh, at least I know since they were kids too in high school uh, and the beginnings of um, just. Uh, uh, fighting for those causes. Mm. Uh, and so um, we we kind of grew up um, watching our parents. My mom had a TV show, Ya Es Tiempo, for nine years. Ya Es, ya es Tiempo. Tiempo. Now mm. is the time. Wow. And um, and my dad always had, had Tiempo newspaper since 1982. Wow. So mm. uh, I was born in 79, so I basically just uh, grew up with it all, <laughs> all our life. So from the time oh, we man. were... I don't know, five or six years old, we were on top of the the car throwing newspapers into people's mm-hmm. yards trying to get the word out, trying to get out uh, whatever message or whatever. The Tiempo we, uh, newspaper? The Tiempo newspaper, yeah. Wow. yeah I Talk about that mission. That. That's, 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 not, that's not an easy mission. That's a, that you're, you're on an island by yourself when, the, when you're starting something like that, right? From what I understand, uh, Tiempo newspaper um, was a... Um, you know, people didn't understand it. Uh, I think a lot of our gente, you know, we always uh, 
I hate to bring this kind of thing up, but crabs in a bucket, I think yeah. goes into any, any demographic. I think everybody just kind of goes with that uh, insecurity sure. and, and wanting to um, tear people down because they don't quite understand it or they see people as wanting to be bigger than maybe they think they should be or something mm. like that. And uh, from what I've known of my parents and how we were taught, uh, it has nothing to do with ego. It mm. was always about wanting to have a voice like you talk about, mm. Johnny, and uh, and just um, uh, have our identity and um, and and get that out, uh, what's going on and how to how we can help and be of service to to our fellow man, you know. And so that's kind of where it all stemmed from. Um, fighting for civil rights and uh, mm. to, to starting. I with think that. that that's a good, you know, crabs in a bucket is not, I mean, you, uh, why I relate to that well is because I'm guilty of that. I mm. mean, my upbringing taught me that that was the motto. Like you, you had to tear something down so you could feel better. So, right. you, but as you grow, you, you definitely want to grow out of that. But I mean, uh, no I, I think uh, where we come from, I think that's a natural feeling. Man, so, so talking about... Uh, you said your mom, right, what she was doing. Tell us a little bit more about that from what you know, how that started, where where was that place at, and what stuff like that. Uh, she was, uh, it was on Channel 25. Okay. Uh, she would come out on Sundays and just interview um, people in the community um, and sort of had uh, the same uh, mode as Temple Newspaper. Uh, I think it was always about bringing awareness to uh, our culture and, and uh, what's going on and uh, who's doing great things and wanting to get that word out, uh, wanting, wow. to, wanting to spread uh, whatever messages we could to uplift and grow um, on all of our, um, for just for, for strength, strength in media, uh, strength in um, n knowing who you are, knowing mm -hmm. that you're important. Uh, I think if you know history too, especially um in the world in the United States, it's hard for me to, to just pinpoint an area because I want to, I think it encompasses the entire world. Yeah. But just knowing um, that uh, Mexicanos and Hispanics here, um, they, they weren't there. They weren't even a people. There mm. was no ch check box in the United States mm. for being Hispanic. When okay. you, when you were put on into schools, you were white. Mm. Uh, and so my dad also grew up um as an army brat with uh, mm. with his father, uh, stepfather, and moved around a lot. So he was in Virginia and Chicago and Waco, um, Hawaii and different places. Yeah. And he saw racism everywhere he went. And mm. so whenever they would be in schools, um, they weren't, first of all, they could not speak Spanish. Uh, they oh. could not, um, you know, f feel like um, they were important. Uh, so he was looked at as either um, he wasn't white and he wasn't black. And so what are we? Who am I? Mm. Um, they wouldn't even let him use his name, Ernesto, which he uh, came to make sure everybody knew his, his name correctly yeah. as we grew up, which is why I say my name correctly, even mm. though my Spanish is, is still being worked on mm -hmm. every day. Right. But um, he was known as Ernest or Ernie, and they wanted to chop up our names. And, and that's an old story that goes back to uh, people from all over the world coming to the United States or moving to any different kind of place. People right. that un don't understand it or don't know how to say it, right. uh, say it a certain way. And so I gave my kids some authentic um, names so All they right. can know who they are from a young age, too. So it's just... Well, a, could you share some of those names that you kind of went with? Well, uh, I also have a little bit of Sicilian in my mom's okay. uh, background. All so, right. um, of course, I named my son Ernesto Luis also, my eldest. I've got four boys. Oh, um, but mm. then my next one is uh, Vicente Luciano. Okay. So Vicente was on uh, my wife's side. I, I think all of our names kind of probably... Um, we all have similar names in our families, especially, yeah, yeah. you know, being Mexicano, yeah. everybody's kind of got Tradition. the same name, traditional <laughs> names. Um, so there's a lot of Vicentes, but Vicente uh, Luciano is uh, my 13-year-old now. My 10-year-old is Antonio Giovanni. Okay. And uh, my uh, my baby, which is uh, uh, eight years old, is Santiago Vincenzo. Okay. And so it's Man. not uh, it's not uh, Vincent, it's Vincenzo. You kind of okay. got to put your Vincenzo. hand like this okay. when you say okay. that kind of thing. But we sort of um, wanted to um, honor our um, our our heritage and culture sure. uh, by uh, giving them those names, the first name and the middle names, and just to kind of touch on all of our family and and who we are. No, that's that's <clears> good. <throat> so uh, could you uh, run through? I know I've been mentioning it, but your parents' full names, who they are. The, 
Sure. So uh, Ernesto Fraga is my father. Okay. <clears throat> um, he didn't have a middle name um, okay. for whatever reason. Um, and then Linda Francesca Fraga is uh, okay. is my mother. So, um, you know, she, uh, we always uh, talk about our past is that uh, she was uh, half Siciliana and half Mexicana. Okay. Uh, de Monterrey, you know, our, our family. Right, and, Monterrey. Uh, right. and, and my dad, too, I think, uh, you know, different parts, Durango and, and all around. I forget, you know, yeah. um, those areas uh, have changed and evolved, too, to know yeah. all of the areas that we're from. But um uh, a lot of history that uh, is tough for me to remember sure. about uh, fleeing Mexico during the Revolution and yeah. uh, and all kinds of history that kind of went into knowing uh, who we are and and where we are and uh, where we're going. Kind of thing. I, I got a quick one. Uh, what, what, what what all this brings up to me is I'm not sitting here without the tiempo. Yeah. And ya ya es el tiempo. How'd you say that again? Ya es tiempo. Okay. Ya ya es tiempo. Where do you know what made them think of this idea? Because like me, there's no way I could have came up with this. For like, you were already in some media, so that I yeah. don't know if this pertains to you because you were kind of in that vibe. Yeah. But I know I'm not sitting here. If people don't say go copy the tiempo because then I had a copy. Uh, I, all I had to do is copy and paste. Sure, sure. Well, you know, and I wish my my father and my mother were, could be here to to relay a lot sure. of these stories because I'll never do it justice as to what they can tell you about yeah. you know because I wasn't necessarily there. Sure. Uh, what I do know is that um, um, you know uh, my father after uh, moving around a lot and uh, sort of uh, finding his identity. Um, let me sort of tell a little bit of his background. He uh, I know that at the end of high school he was um, became junior president of a junior LULAC, I think back in those days, uh, and to even be involved or um, stepping up to take on that kind of role um, in high school. He went to Waco High, okay. um, but to be doing that kind of stuff back then, I think people were like, what is this? What are you doing? You know, what, yeah. is, what is the purpose? Um, but uh, he was uh, br uh, brought into uh, politics uh, and uh, just helping and being of service, I think, at a young age. Um, and so somewhere along the way, um, he was fighting for causes, uh, all mm. over Texas, mm. um, you know, which, uh, led into, um, starting the Brown Berets, uh, mm. in Austin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute. <clears throat> yeah. Take a pit stop. Tell us about all that. He started, I mean, t tell us about how that worked. You know, um, there's a lot of different stories that uh, I think evolve um, for a lot of different families and how they were involved. But what I know is that uh, he um, he began the Brown Berets in Austin, and he can okay. tell you all of the people that we, uh, we know and tell the stories of how um, he, um, you know, passed his beret to other people to start chapters uh, elsewhere, mm. but Austin <clears throat> and brought it to Waco. Um, but uh, in doing that, too, they would go to uh, South Texas. Okay. Um, and wherever there was something going on where um, an injustice was occurring, uh, especially in the for Mexicanos and in in, uh, getting, um, whether it was police, police brutality or um, having land stolen, mm. um, they would uh, go down there because... Uh, I, I suppose because my mom and dad knew how to handle the media. And as you okay. know, if yeah. you don't bring in the media, nobody knows. Nobody <laughs> knows what's going on. We didn't have cell phones. Um, and so they people uh, could do whatever they wanted uh, to uh, a small group. And uh, they could uh, wail about it all they want, but nobody cared. And they nobody get away did with it no matter what. So, because, so to have somebody who can go and uh, enlist the media to come and, uh, and care and... Uh, and talk to them and um, uh, and do that was important. And so they would do that and then hold marches. Uh, and uh, he would also start newspapers. So he's had a few newspapers before Tiempo. Okay. Um, uh, different names um, The over the years. I remember my sister, who ended up going to Yale, um, was in a class for Hispanic studies. And they were learning about a, a newspaper called El Coraje Chicano. Okay. And uh, she asked my mom at the time... Uh, and this is in the 90s when we're in, when she was in college. Uh, she said, have you ever heard of this newspaper? They're talking about it in class. And my mom is telling her, Fuerza, which is my sister, Fuerza Linda Fraga, um, th that's your father's newspaper. He started that newspaper, <laughs> and it's just kind of wow. mind-blowing because this was at Yale University mm. um, where she wasn't taking a class about a newspaper that her father uh, started. Wow. Um, so how uh, Tiempo evolved when he came to Waco, um, is, um, I think a mix of, um, just 
uh, other influences in town and other friends of his that he had. I, uh, I know that um, were integral part in, um, you know, the beginnings of Tiempo, but mm -hmm. he, he had been doing that uh, kind of thing uh, with uh, organizing since, yes. uh, since high school, and it kind of evolved into starting Tiempo in 1982. Sounds so. like the Tiempo was pretty easy for him <laughs> after all that. I mean, you, I mean, the idea and the concept was there, natural. You, you know, you you never know uh, what tomorrow's going to bring and what you get into. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that having that kind of background, um, it kind of led him into it. It wasn't necessarily uh, like we think of, oh, I want to start a business so I can make money. It was had nothing to do with monetary gain mm -hmm. and everything to do with wanting to have a voice and, and, and like you say, el corazón um, in the community. Yeah. What Real quick, let's not bounce off this. Yeah. Let's. Your sister's name and what college did she go to? I want everybody to hear. Uh, hear that. And what year was that? that? That's important too. Yes, uh, my sister was named uh, Fuerza Linda, um, which is, um, I guess, interpreted as beautiful strength. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always kind of laugh and talk about uh, that had to do with y'all's hippie days and why y'all were naming, uh, <laughs> you know. But my parents were uh, very involved in the movimiento, uh, which was just fighting for civil rights uh, in Texas, mm -hmm. you know, uh, back in the 70s. Um, so, you know, she was born in 79. I'm sorry. I, I was born in 79. She was born in 78. So, okay. um, we're not even a year apart. Uh, we're so close, but she, um, you know, she did very well. We all went to Waco high and, uh, I have two sisters and, uh, she, uh, she's been to a few different colleges, but she went to Yale university. She got a lot of scholarships, um, you know, aced the verbal of her SATs and did very well. Uh, and then she, um, UT Law School, and she became a lawyer. And mm. so she's a lawyer right now and fighting for uh, causes in Austin, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so my younger sister also, um, she's, uh, you know, we were all brought up to, um, to care and to pay attention and to always wanting to do our part and see where we can fit in to make a difference in this world. Uh, which is not an easy task to know what, you know, what, what can we do? Who are we? Who are we to be able to step up and do any of that kind of thing? That part. Um, but she's doing a lot, too, uh, with, uh, within education. Her name is Francesca mm. uh, Fraga, and uh, she also went to Harvard. Uh, so one sister wow. at uh, Yale and one at Harvard. And so then it, it goes back to, oh, where did you go? But I went to the University of Texas, but uh, I go. was not a big Ivy Leaguer like they were. So, yeah. you know, I always uh, like to put it back to, um, you know, I... I, uh, I was, uh, I grew up, uh, I like to say I grew up more in the streets of Waco than my sisters might have done, but, yeah. you know, and not having brothers, being an only boy, you know, you kind of end up running around in the streets with all of the gang and that kind of so thing. So your mom and dad went three for three in college. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's we funny. all, we all were taught that uh, going to college was important is a big step. Yeah. Um, and so we always tried to, you know, we've always tried to do our best in whatever we're doing. Man, I'll tell you though, that's a, that's a really big deal when you're talking about universities uh, just in general, right? To be able for our kids to go to school when they go to school, um, but you, you know, there's there's not too many that I know that say they that I know personally or know of that go to like the Ivy League mm. type school. Sure. That's I mean, you said two of the biggest school schools out there like Th that. Those are like on movies and stuff, right? It, <laughs> and you know, it's not it it impresses me. As yeah. I say, I didn't do it, yeah. so it, it they impressed me by doing that kind of thing. And uh, I think it's just knowing. Um, are being taught that you can do anything and yeah. kind of knowing what opportunities are there. I yeah. think that what's um, what's more needs to be talked about is how we don't teach our kids that you can do that too, yeah. that you you can achieve these kind of goals and it is open to you and there is a way. I um, wish I wish we had a remix version right here right? and say that again because like man like that part because when when you when you said where they went. They went there because of the leadership that was behind them. Right. Was with mom sure. and dad. Like, that's right. Because they taught them that anything was possible. They, you, you, that's very important right now. Like, I think the expectations of what's possible is not, is not, that, that's what these shows need to be. You, you, Waco High, Yale, and Har, Har, I mean, biggest colleges in, in, in America that you could, you, you could name and brag about on Ivy League. Yeah. Um, it can be done right here. Yeah. And, you know, not, not only that, you know, but when we're talking about our the Hispanic culture, uh, we can do all those things that are a big deal. Own your own restaurant, restaurant, that's a big deal. Your own media, you know, uh, uh, channel, your own media departments or, or movements, you can do all these different things, right? To be a successful father, you know, working at a 
some plant somewhere, right? Uh, but success in our gente uh, is so important that we're able to be um, individuals that contribute to society uh, coming from the Hispanic culture, right? So that's what I love about our culture is that we don't necessarily press one way or the other. It's, it's we make up all these people, right? So no if, if you don't make it to an Ivy League, you're not less than, right? That's right. But we get to say, hey, we even make it <laughs> to the Ivy League, right? Yeah. We, we we're in baseball, we're in football, we're in you know we're athletics, we're in schools, we're we're in uh, 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 plants, we're in you know the fields, we're, we're everywhere, yes. right? And so we as a people have a rich uh, heritage that you know we're in music. We, I mean, we can keep going, right? Right. There's so many facets of who we are. And to make up the great people that we are, even our faith and and all these different things. So that's what I love about it, discovering these things, right? Because we got others that will come on with their stories. And what's equally as fascinating is, wait a minute, y'all created uh, this restaurant in Central Texas and you're still around, right? Right. This is crazy. So we celebrate all these different things here. Uh, even being in the, uh, the political arena world, right? Mm -hmm. Even like in your father, this is this is beautiful to be able to discover and find out that he helped start or started the uh, Brown Beret uh, movement there in Austin. Is that right? Yes. And wow, because I hear a lot of people uh, that reference that. You know, a lot of yes. old schoolers. My dad, mm -hmm. my my uh, mother through marriage uh, with my dad uh, was a part of that, and they talk about that in Austin, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Mama Christine is what we call her. Shout out to Mama Christine. She always tells these stories, and she'll crack open a big old Colgate smile when she talks about the Brown Beret movement and how my dad was a part of it. But she's from Austin, and so she knows a lot about this stuff. And I'll tell her, send me some pictures, you know. And then there's other relatives f through that that have been a part of it, and it's just good to know that, that your dad started that movement out there. Could sure. you tell us a little bit more uh, for those that are younger, for those that may have not known, um, what was the what would you say, knowing your dad, uh, was the main reason for him him to even start that in those times? You talked about it a little bit, but let's try to go there a little bit more. Yeah, um, man, as I say, tough to say. Um, you know, that's really for him to say. Sure. Um, but what I know is uh, it's about um, you know organizing. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you know, trying to get our people together because uh, we're uh, we're our strongest when we're together. It, right. It's not it's not a one person thing. It's uh, galvanizing the entire community uh, to um, to uh, reach a goal, to reach yeah. an objective. Uh, and I think the object objective at the time um, just stemmed from necessity, mm. uh, necessity of um, <clears throat> uh, opening doors. Uh, Avenues for jobs in this uh, in the city and in the state and in the country, uh, mm -hmm. opening doors for education, mm -hmm. uh, representation in the schools and in the uh, <clears throat> in the courts, mm -hmm. uh, um, and the representation and organizing uh, for all of that uh, was, I think, the entire goal. And so you, we had to be organized mm -hmm. uh, in order to achieve those goals, uh, because otherwise nobody would listen, and uh, they can just as easily lock you up just for speaking out. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of that um, had to do with um, when they would uh, have marches or go speaking about it, then the uh, powers that be might just uh, send the police to quell that voice mm -hmm. uh, and they would get beat on the head by batons uh, okay. many times and taken to jail many times and they can silence that voice. But when they were able to organize uh, the Brown Berets and, and uh, be... Um, uh, have a more of a militant presence okay. uh, and be armed um, with okay. a 30 odd six and everybody armed, uh, uh, but armed uh, for a peaceful protest. Okay. But it was just sending the message that um, that uh, we're not here to just be pushed around. Okay. Uh, and all of that was to show strength and presence so that we could have the rest of the community behind us. Wow. Um, and uh, there's so many things that we could go into talking about um, when we talk about these things. Um, but it all goes into say that no one person uh, and story and going to Yale and starting the Brown Berets is above or, or bigger than any other uh, buddy's story mm -hmm. or a purpose uh, in this in the communities or in this world. Yeah. Um, everybody, there's a purpose for everybody. We mm -hmm. needed people who could speak to the media. We needed people who could educate in the schools. Mm -hmm. We needed people who could bring up the youth and um, and uh, you know 
get people excited about uh, yeah. making a difference. Yeah. Um, there's so many um, avenues where we need people. We need people to stay strong uh, in uh, whether it was in the fields or the factories or uh, Congress or, you know, in the um, the president of the United States. We need people everywhere so that we can help the greatest number of people uh, know that we are important and that we've got a lot to do and a lot to say. That's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Man. That. You know what God, I mean? That's just that, that, go man. on for days. No, no, no. That's no, good. That's a just, mic drop. You right just there. killed it, bro. Yeah, like no, that, that's, that's everything. I mean, there is no competition. You, the end of the day is we all trying to get better together. No doubt. And, 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 and if you're working at it, we all have the opportunity to have kids. So we may feel that we don't have that opportunity. Oh, I can't go to Yale. Well, maybe I can't. But you know what? I'm raising th four kids that I can give them the opportunity where they can go. Yeah. So, and every man and every woman has that um, that opportunity. And you can't put a level of importance on on that on doing man, that, that, on, that on, part. on anybody's boy, goals. The, boy, you can goosebumps. you'll never know the importance of it because you don't know what that goal can change or what that goal can do or how important or impactful it can be. Yeah. So you just want everybody to understand these things and and have this mindset of we're all in this together and great things will happen uh you know and i didn't mean to cut you off but I, it reminds me of talking to my my parents because we were raised to um uh, always help people, and and we uh, we idolized and look up to my mom and dad for uh, a lot of the things that they did that we were privy to that maybe not even ev everyone else saw. Yeah. Uh, and wanted to follow in their footsteps and make a change uh, and be impactful on the world too. And even today, our uh, I used to have conversations with my dad and my mom and dad about. Um, you know, I don't know that I have the the time or can put forth all the effort that y'all did to to make such a big change in uh, in the community and in the world. And he would just, uh, you know, he was very good about being very calm and and just <laughs> saying, "Don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. You just mm. you do what you do, and uh, and the times will call you. You know, mm. the the moments uh, that." Um, that you can make big impacts in the moments in your life that you are already making big impacts that you don't even realize they they're going to happen no matter what. So mm -hmm. you just get, be a good person, and that's all that matters. Wow. Is, it, is, it, is your phone ringing? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those moments, right? It's one of them <laughs> right. big moments, man. He, yeah. he, he hit it right on point there. No doubt. No, and I, and I have a question with that. Like, man, knowing your dad and, and you know even doing business with him, you know. Man, I have to, I want I want to know from what you understand, him being such a leader, a great leader, uh, a person of integrity, uh, leading these great causes, right? As you have to be for people to follow you in that way. Can you talk about his approach? Because the type of personality that I picked up from him was he was like a bridge builder. Right. I've never known him or even have heard from others where he kind of comes down with this hard fist and kind of dispersed anything on that side or on this side. But he brought people together for a movement, even though there may be different other personalities that might be like that. But him as a leader, he never displayed that. He always even when you look at the temple itself, for instance. Right. You had all kind of different people on there. Right. I mean, from. From lawyers to you name it, to just somebody sure. celebrating a, a, a quinceanera, yeah, yeah. you know, and it wasn't just our culture, right? Like the lawyers, right? Uh, but you did have our culture there. But what I'm saying is, is he was able, he had the ability, just from my limited viewpoint, right, to be able to cross socioeconomic statuses of folks uh, to different cultures, uh, even f to as he represented a side, the Hispanic side. He seemed to have the respect from the other side. Can you kind of speak to the how that your dad being that way? Yeah, because he wasn't. <laughs> you would think that right off the top, before you touch that, is you would think that since he's taking up for our side, automatically it would be so abrasive that it wouldn't. That's the key to this whole puzzle. Is yeah, how you, and you use the word militant, right? Like, like sometimes people can look at that for other reasons and be like, "Oh, dude, he's just this big pulverizing fist," you know, and. Yep. But yes. anyway. Well, you know, you'll always have um, opposition uh, from the outside and from your own community, okay. from your own family. Okay. So no matter what decisions you make or how you decide to go about things, there's going to be people that are going to mm. question you. Uh, and I think his um, um, 
bridge building and opportunities to, to be very calm mm. and uh, work with all sides. Uh, it, was, it was always evolving um, mm. because there, I'm sure there were lots of people and lots of factions and lots of groups who felt yeah. like, no, we're not going about this the right way. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and so you sort of have to, life is about balance in everything we do. And you have to kind of balance out how you, um, how you uh, include uh, the groups that may not want to be mm. going about it the way you are and also deciding and making a decision um, uh, how to how you just want to get things done mm. uh, and then live with the consequences. And so uh, there was it, it wasn't uh, always easy. Sure. That, that's for sure, especially at the beginning. I think it became easier in the later years once people uh, once people will get to know you. Uh, and they know what you're all about. I think be more, you'll, of course, uh, get more people on your side. Yeah. Um, but um, it was always about um, uh, coming together um, and and trying to bring uh, everybody together. And that always main theme that we're all in this together. And and we're talking about including when we're fighting police brutality. We're talking about working with the police. And mm. in the later years, they knew my dad, and we knew the chiefs, and and uh, and wow. we. We had to work together wow. because in order to uh, accomplish the goal that we want to accomplish, we'll get there much faster if, if we're all working together. Uh, it's just that I think the back in the 70s, it wasn't that easy and they didn't and other people may not have uh, understood uh, what mm. was going on and did not want to work together because our uh, communities are not always understood. Uh, and so that's... Uh, there's just a lot of lessons to be taught in there as to um, educate yourself and uh, don't be scared of um, people that are not like you, um, whether uh, no matter where they come from or even if they're going to Yale and Harvard. You know, we were taught that uh, no matter what you're doing to be grounded and mm -hmm. uh, and, and know that, uh, you know, if you're as long as you're doing uh, things with uh, with your your heart uh, and other people in mind, uh, it'll all work out in the end. Uh, so. Wow. I, you mm. know, I get off on a tangent and it's, no, it's, it's, it's not a tangent, brother, it, it, man. It's tough here, to know which way gospel, to go with, the, with the conversation. Gospel. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Here is not a tangent, brother. This, this is this is what it's all about, man. This is uh, beautiful things that are developing right here. Uh, I believe we're making history here. Uh, I agree. And, Without a doubt. And, and so I'm just excited to be a part of history. And thank you for dialoguing with us and being transparent and honest because, you know, we have an opportunity to represent the people and I think about those that are on the inside of that camera that are going to watch this online. Um, they would have questions like, man, I want to know this and that and the other. And because it just hits different in a nostalgic way because, you know, the tiempo, you know, so many so many things were represented, as we kept saying. And, and a lot of people that are going to look at this that are around our age or even older, they're either going to be like, man, I know Ernesto, Ernesto, you know, I remember the, the Brown Berets. I tell my kids these stories, so they're going to be able to watch it and hear some of that. And then there's those that are going to be like, man, my parents, they're no longer here, possibly. My parents were talking about this. I remember I put my quinceanera in the, the tiempo. tiempo right? I got it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Let, me look, let me find it for you. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, those of you who are, we're doing this for you. Now, now we're blessed just sitting here. This is this is such a beautiful moment for us personally, but we're doing this for you, and we're recording it for you. And so, as you look at it, could you engage with us in the comments on any time in, in in this? You can push pause. You can you have the ability to push pause, but to make a comment, or if you have a something that rings a bell for you nostalgically, where you remember growing up. Could you share some of those stuff? Even if you have a picture of the tiempo. Yeah, post your tiempo, because yeah, I know we got all of ours. Thing. Matter of fact, we're going to put a hashtag, post your tiempo. Yes. Okay? And, and so, you know what we're going to do, Johnny? You know, we like giving away stuff. Oh, yeah, it's coming. So, so <laughs> we're going to give away some stuff. Man. I know a roofing company or something that might, that might sponsor oh, a giveaway. Well, they, we're, we're, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's oh, right. man. But, but um, we're going to choose one of the comments on there that we feel, and we're going to bring a, a, a Ernesto in this on on helping us choose something, uh, but but we're gonna bless somebody out there just for simply engaging with us because we do this for you. We love you guys. Not only do we want to bless you just through what we're recording, but we want to find opportunities to bless you even tangibly and get to meet you personally. So uh, anyway, what what you just said though to touch on what you said, all, all that is important for people like me to hear. I know that because like. I'm a copy and paste guy. I, I'm a guy that grew up and didn't have a mom and dad to follow 
traditionally, right? We had an untraditional way to do it. So if I wanted to be traditional, I had to copy and paste. I had to watch good families and mm-hmm. take notes, take a piece of it, yeah. and boom, 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 and then put it together and look where I'm at now. Like it's, I, we didn't. This is not no rocket science that I got. It's copy and paste. And some of the stuff that you just shared that you call a tangent, maybe, what it is completely opposite. It is information that people like me will absorb. And they will take it and, and apply it to themselves. And how you apply it to your family is completely different. How, I, but the fact of the matter is, if you're if you're applying it, you're getting better and you're getting stronger. That's uh-huh. why that's important, man. Very yeah. important. And I think that that's what the opportunity of uh, shows like this can give people pieces to take here and there to apply to their family in their own fashion. And and with that, in years come, it, we all get stronger. Yeah. yeah. And, and what we're supposed to do, you know, copy and paste or however it is that, you know, you may not grow up uh, with a lot of things, but that's why we're all in this together. That's why it's important to be who you are, because you never know who's watching you uh, and, and uh, mm. who you're helping just by watching you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I feel you. It, you know, it's important. Well, I mean, think about what we just said, what we've been saying this whole time. When you look at how just God, this all works out, man, like. I remember doing business with your dad from our church when we first started our, our church ministry and we would do half pages and, and I didn't know nothing about nothing about media. You could have tried, we could have tried to go to Waco trip, you know, or the temple. We wanted to communicate to our people uh, from the Hispanic culture that we were starting this, this church movement. And I remember going to your dad, little did I know I was going to be in media, Right. But I, I knew somebody that I could relate to. I knew of somebody that I could relate to. Go to him and say, what do I do? I want to put the logo and we want to say this. Well, don't worry about it. Here's what you do. He, he guided me and would tell me, made, made it easy for me, right? And my experience going into that, that, that uh, sm- small building and him showing me and look, all the archives and stuff. And I mean, I didn't know then. What I know now I'm realizing is that Little did he know, man, shout, shout out to, to Ernesto Sr., you know what I mean? Uh, God bless you. You didn't know that you were modeling, that you were making it easy, that us to even reference doing anything that has to do with media, our reference point and the community is the temple, right? It's believable. Why? Because we experienced it. We've seen it. One of our own people led this thing and did it. And because of that, we have the audacity uh, to, try to, to do this because, we're, yeah, to, to try. To copy and paste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, again, going back to we we are standing on the shoulders of giants, man, that have gone before mm. us. We're not alone, right? And that's why where the past inspires. My goodness, does it, it, it inspire and, and, it, and it allows the present to connect, right? Because thank God we've had people like your family who stepped out in faith and led the way for us to even make believers out of us to, yeah, we can do it. So says the Fraga family. <laughs> they yeah. show no us. doubt. No Amen. doubt. And, and we're standing and we're standing on giants ourselves too. Amen. You know, we're all, we're all on giants or somebody who did something. And that's why it's so important to know history and learn history um, to know, um, you know, that there's a reason to be a proud person. And uh, I like to use the word, the audacity yeah. to, to, to make a difference because mm. you should, we, you need to have the audacity um, when, uh, when you're doing what's right. And, and so when, as we're talking about all this and we put this together, uh, the tiempo was the theme and the power of media, you were talking about it and the, t- the power of the voice. Um, I got to experience that. Uh, we were, we, we, Real quick story is uh, my daughter was on the front page of Tiempo in a, in, a, in a softball uniform. I will never forget that. Mm. And and I, I was I told my father in law, I was like, man, it's tough being Hispanic in, in in a softball world because we were behind times. It was yep. you know at, at that time when she was here, softball was not very popular. It was starting to catch way. And I was like, we're just not getting the credit, the just do credit. You know, three state championships, still not in the news. Blah blah blah. And he and very calmly, I remember he, when he, we were on the phone. He said, Let, "Let's just let's do an article." And then, and let's do and so. Th- that, this happened a week later. A week later, I go get the tiempo, and I'm expecting like a little, you know, little, little quarter cop at, at the best. We're front page. Mm-hmm. He puts it on there, and I'll just say um, the school she was at and everything. 
the tone changed, right? Because, and so it showed me the power of mm. you, you do not have to, you do not have to be, the way he attacked it was so classy, was so, and I, you got me, you got to remember, this was 10 years ago, mm. 12 years ago. Johnny had no class to him at that point. I was, let's throw it in their face and let's do it. And I'm ready. I'll take my shirt off. Let's flex. And, you know, him and my father-in-law showed me that that was a big, the way my family went from that point on forward, mm -hmm. how to handle things. Because, you know, and I, we, we put our families in, in, in environments where if we, we have to act, you have to act accordingly, right? You, you can't go to these events acting, acting out, acting crazy like we were born to do and be successful with it. But the, the power that we did, that we had with that picture and the way we handled it with class went, it, my family would never evolve to where we're at today without, without seeing the little bit of that. Him and my father-in-law did that for me that moment. It, it was priceless, man. Wow. It was very I, I love to hear that story. You know, um, my, as you were talking to also Pastor G, my, there was always an open door at the Imple. Um, I love these stories of who was in the Imple uh, for for uh, so many things because there was so much more that we wanted to highlight. There's so many mm -hmm. people um, that we wanted to um, put a spotlight on uh, in our community uh, as they should be. Um, and so to to make a difference and have an influence in people's lives and and uh, show everybody that people like your daughter were excelling um, and being leaders in the community uh, in her own right um, is to show people how how we what we can do yeah. and who we should be. Uh, because yeah. everybody looks up to everyone. So you always want to um, be the best you can be because it's important that you, um, uh, you know, have a lot of pride in yourself so that everybody else can have pride in who we are as a people. And there's a lot of us out here. There's so many successful stories, so mm -hmm. many. But if there's not a platform to display them, they can go unnoticed. And, and the, more, the more kids that know all these stories is the, is, is the more vision that they'll have to inspire to be something great. Yep. Because if you don't have a vision, you can't go get it. Right. You know, your only you, you, your only goals can be what you envision in your brain and what you see. Yep. No, that's it, man. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about your parents as you're talking about them and what they did individually and collectively. They themed out this temple thing, and your mom had the visual piece of this media, like right. I mean, she was on Channel Twenty Five. Sure. Your dad had the written form of this, the news, and Together, they were a powerhouse to be displayed for our people and beyond our people. Um, man, I'm just I'm just getting that that whole full picture of of your family. You know, I, like I said, I didn't know about the Channel Twenty Five, but when I bring it up, people talk about it, right? Uh, and I, I didn't realize that, but. And it says a lot that they put it on there at the time and had my mom on there, too. So we also have to uh, give credence, you know, to all of the organizations and the people right. that, that helped us along. As I say, we're all in this together because my parents couldn't have done it without the help of the whole community also. And, and, right. and, and even as hard as we say things were back in for your dad being a male Hispanic, mm -hmm. I can only imagine back then of being a female Hispanic. Sure. That 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 was a little bit even harder. Let's let's be honest. It was harder for the women back then to have a voice. Period. Right. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm reminded of uh, of a lot of a lot of stories, but uh, not only becoming a professional and how difficult it is to make those inroads and get those um, positions, uh, but also even with the brown berets. My mom was around for a, a lot of that too, mm. and there were a lot of people who um, didn't um, didn't necessarily you know, like uh, who, who was running things or who, who was, uh, who was uh, putting themselves out there. You know, everybody feels like they can do it better, um, but instead of just uh, going and doing your thing, which is the whole thing, is that uh, you don't have to worry about how somebody else is going about things. You know, if you think you can do it better, go do it. And that's mm -hmm. what the Ample was all about. We wanted everybody to feel like you can do it too. This is, this is what we're here for, to, to, to highlight everybody. You know, you're important also. We're all important. That's good. No, that's right. That we felt the, the we we have felt the same way, uh, like the way we're we're doing this is with a particular purpose and how God has shown us to do it. Well, you use the word all the time, encouraging. Yeah, that's a very that's a, we're encouraging everyone around you to yeah. to do exactly that. Yeah, right? if if there's a way you want to do this type of thing, then go and do it. We've been inspired yeah. to do it. Uh, this is not the way; it's a way, and this is 
a way that we're coming about doing it. And so, yeah, I agree. And I think that that's that again, that points to just our culture is has so many facets of it, right? And is if you're inspired, this is not a competition. It's not never will be. We're here for the people. And if there's other ways you want to go about doing it, then then do it. And if we had a part to do with inspiring you to do it, like he said, we've all been and we're telling you how we were inspired. And it keeps going and going and going. That's what this is about. And never posturing ourselves, you know, just in general, but especially since we're talking about within our our culture, our our, our culture and our heritage, like we definitely don't want to do that. There's no competition, man. We're just getting out here and doing it. And we're just grateful, like seriously grateful to be able to do it, right? And so if if you are uh, like-minded and you want to jump on board and help out in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you know, holler at us. We would love to uh, uh, embrace that that support. And, you know, we have been grateful to get that support here by, you know, you showing up here today and engaging with us in this. This is this. We're going to say it, this solidifies things now. You know what I mean? For us to have the the uh, Fraga family here, you know what I mean? Oh, we're with you, man. And, and, and so, know, and it's so, my pleasure. Man, time what, out, time what out. a stamp. I'm bro. glad you said it right now, and I'm glad he said that because in my brain I'm thinking like, We've had we have a podcast. We do this. We do. We, there's going to be a bunch more. Yeah. But but I I mean I'm, I don't know about you, but I feel like I don't even know if he knows it. But I I know his pops already knows it. Mr. Frog already knows. Yeah. It. We, we we got a little we got, we got a new uh, 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 <laughs> we got a new guy that that's going to be around. This won't be the last time you see Mr. Frog in here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're an important tool. You, you're the you're you're a piece that that um yeah. you I. I It'd be unfair to say we could do a hundred of these episodes and and, and not have a piece of you coming back and being a part of this because it, 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 I just feel, I got the chills right now, but I'm just saying like, it just, it it feels like it's, it's the needed piece that might be missing to, to do it, to, to to make the goal, to achieve the goal that we want to achieve. We have to do it together. I really appreciate that. I, you know, there's probably nothing I love more than, talking about what we're talking about right now. This is what's uh, most important and dear to my heart, uh, mm-hmm. and it all stems from my mom and dad and the life that they lived. And one more important thing. <clears> in I, our living. It's <laughs> not in that our part, living. But I'll get Amen. in trouble for this because there's a role model that that, that you, you're a part of that I've had for a long time would be your father-in-law. Would you would you introduce who that is? And we, real quick, will you just give a quick analysis? Or, or, or What I know about my father-in-law, uh, Jose Mancha, and the Mancha okay. family. Um, right. Los Pepes, right? Los Pepes restaurant. Um, been around for a long time. Um, and uh, he had, uh, I, you know, I, I forget how many, you know, six or seven restaurants all mm. over Central Texas, uh, you know, at, at one time. But uh, wow. hard workers is, is how I know uh, my in-laws uh, and, and all of my family, uh, my wife's family is, um, you know, he um, uh, he instilled that too in uh in all of his sons and in everybody he came across, he, they were always uh, part of the Waco community also, big yes. part, big part of mm. all of the organizations that came about, about but um, were an um, uh, integral part of uh, a lot of pride also, mm. starting uh, the, his own business, being very successful um, and, uh, and caring and helping uh, a lot of people along the way, a lot of familia and a lot of uh, just people in the community, uh, just seeing how it could be done um, and um, and and raising uh, you know uh, amazing family a big family the quality uh, family the quality family Man. that I think a lot of people know too uh, and this kind of stems to how uh, great our community is here in Waco mm. uh, that we were all here you know uh, I, I remember running around in the in the streets with. Uh, uh, my wife Claudia's uh, brother uh, before I was even kicking it with Claudia, you know. Yes. So um, yeah. it just goes to show how uh, impactful uh, and important uh, Jose Mancha and and the Mancha family, um, you know, always was and is all to this day. One of my biggest idols, man. I copy and paste. I I, I, I watched him. I watched mm. his movements. I watched how he raised his kids. I watched how he talked to his kids. I watched all that and and and, and took notes, right? And, and so he was yeah. a big inspiration. And I. I I known you for decades, but I never put you and 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 Mr. Frog and the Tiempo together, and but I always knew that you were Mr. Mancha's son-in-law. So that hmm. you know, I always knew that part. So putting this together today was is is really cool. You you you've gotten the opportunity to be around some really really good um, old school people that that, oh, yeah. don't, that that traditionally do it the right way, traditionally do it 
hard workers. Mr. Mancha hired us to do his tile, me and my father-in-law to do his tile. This was 28 years ago when I first started. And Mr. Mancha handed us every piece of tile. Mm. He, 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 he paid us, but he, he helped us lay the tile and he wouldn't go anywhere. With, he's a hardworking man. It's, just, it's in their blood. They, they don't know how to sit down and be still. That's right. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> they just don't, man. I mean, it, it, it's, they're just bred different. But yep. it, it's an honor. I, I know... Don't you, when you look back, do you ever think it's an honor to be around such, so many good, God put you in a good position. Unbelievable honor. And as I watch your family with, with your wife and kids, you, you, you've you mimicked that to a T as well. You've done a good job, man, outside looking in, watching you and watching your family success and, yeah. and how y'all, how y'all position yourself in, in the places y'all go and hang out. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my hat off to you. Uh, you're, you're one of one of the families that I watch as well. Y'all done great. I appreciate that, John. And, and your family too, you know, but it, it's just a reminder, um, how, how many different ways that you can go about things, how, how, uh, how many stories and how many people are just an integral part of who we are today and, and how strong we are today as a community. You know, with that, uh, you, you coming in from the inside, from, from your family, uh, who are some of the names? I know he brought up one of them. Uh, who are some of the names that just come to your mind of that was around your dad? I mean, because I know your dad's like, I mean, he's the person. You know, any of the old schoolers that I remember that I know that were leaders of leaders here in the city in Central Texas, every single one of them knew your dad, and they would talk about your dad. But anyway, from your perspective, who are some of those names for you that you can remember? Uh, gosh. You know that that's a, a tough thing to start uh, putting out names because uh, there's a lot of them, and I sure. don't want to leave anybody out. But um, uh, when we're talking about media, you know the Montelongos, uh, as yeah. you, as you well know, and, yeah. um, were were a big part. Um, you know uh, Manuel Sestaita. You know yeah. uh, he he was. Uh, a, can, can you share with like the Montelongos and then this the next one? But but share with everybody who don't know. Yeah, well, I, I just remember being at uh, KRZI as a kid. You oh. know, when uh, when he was uh, on the on the radio, um, you know, there, all, all of these things. Uh, people don't realize that there was, n they were the beginning. There, there was no. I don't remember seeing uh, Mexicanos on TV or hearing no. any the all of the the um, Mexican music and all the different types of. Uh, of uh, Mexican music that we hear today that my kids know all the words to. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't remember knowing that, you know, that you had to, you had to really have a, a you know, close ties with Mexico to really feel that closeness, I think. Mm. Um, you know, it kind of goes into uh, back in the day. And this was all about what people don't understand about uh, uh, having an identity um, in the United States, you know, um, and, and how it's evolved to, um, uh, and there's so much that can be said about it, but, uh, you know, be becoming Chicanos, um, which is a term that uh, we gave ourselves at mm. the time, you know, a political term and just a, a, a term of identity because um, there's so many different types of people from different parts of the world, whether it's just uh, Mexico or um, all so many other South American countries or right. any countries in the world. Uh, to know, to feel that, uh, like, well, that's not us, you know, oh, we're from Mexico, but we're not Chicanos, or we weren't born in the States, or we were this or mm. that or whatever, and all of the different um, uh, decades or um, generations, uh, you know, where you were born and who you are and who you identify with, um, and always just know that uh, the way that my parents taught us and the way that my dad always saw it, too, was, uh, was to, uh, as an inclusive thing, you know, that uh, it, it does, they don't have to understand it, but what we, the way that we teach it is that, uh, you know, we're this so that we can bring everybody in together, you yeah. know, and, and that's the kind of thing. So, gosh, I forgot how, what I was even starting and with, but these Mo names with, with Montelongo, uh, you know, um, you, you see? know, I was a kid, uh, um, but uh, these, these families and these names, um, you know, I remember, uh, uh, Manuel Sestaita, um, you know, being in the army and being mm. a huge veterans affairs advocate. Okay. Um, you know, I, we, I went to school with his kids also. So all of mm. us, you know, we were all going to school together, even um, the Manchas and uh, my wife. Now we went to, um, 
you know, your brother, David Rodriguez, we all went to middle school together here in yeah. Waco. You know, Waco has always been, we've always thought of it as such a small town. Yeah. Um, and, and we love that about it because, uh, you know, we all kind of know each other and we all kind of work together in some way or another. Yeah. We're all helping each other some way or another, whether we realize it or not, you know, mm. um, just by, um, spreading the word and uh, and letting the rest of the community who may not be Mexicanos, you know, and I'm talking about back in the 70s and 80s and 90s and the whole way that it's evolved, um, understanding who we are and feeling comfortable that, uh, um, you know, no matter if we're speaking Spanish or um, talking about helping our community or whatever it is, uh, enlisting um, every community to want to do the same thing and feeling like, yeah, why aren't we all helping each other? Mm. Um, because, you know, that's what it's all about. And that's what uh, that's what any kind of decision or message or, um, you know, goal that we're fighting for today, that that's where it stems from. And that's the sort of mindset uh, we kind of want to pass on and kind of get everybody to agree with is that uh, we're all in this together. You've got to look at it like that and stop looking at it as, um, you know, I'm in this by myself and I got to take care of my family first. And while that is important and, and what I'm all about, we're all about family, um, it's more than that. I'm raising my family to the best of my ability so that they can help uh, those who need help in the rest of the world. It's not raising us so that we can just uh, have our own um, life by ourselves and make it by ourselves because it's too difficult to help others. That I don't believe that's the way we should look at it. And so there's a lot of names uh, that go into Waco. Um, tough for me to even uh, begin calling them off. You know, there's there's just a lot of people who who did a lot and and should should be. Um, you know, um, recognized, recognized. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, man. Thanks for sharing that. Well, um, I have another question here. What, how tough was it? Or what are some moments that you can talk about? There were, um, there were moments of, of, of where they were just tough for your family doing media stuff. You know, what are some of those moments made of made up of, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it be they're trying to do it for the people and maybe there's some stuff that brought discouragement. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of that if we can, if you remember anything, uh, just being in a home and hearing them talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, with any uh, business, I guess, if we're talking about Tiempo or talking about uh, having a TV show, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And so uh, I love El Corazón and, and talking of the heart uh, because it is uh, it is a labor of love. It, uh, you have to have it in your heart to want to do that kind of thing because uh, it's not easy. It's not easy having your own business. It's not easy uh, wanting to excel and, uh, and raise all your kids and give them everything you want. Um, and, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of roadblocks. And, and so it wasn't always tough. I always kind of say it was a labor of love um, because things evolved, too. You know, I mean, uh, n newspapers have ha uh, had a tough time ever since uh, social media mm. and, uh, uh, you know, phones and all that kind of stuff come out. And, and things are changing and things are always mm. evolving and changing. So it wasn't always easy. Um, and uh, you just uh, you just keep the faith, yeah. you know, and, and, mm. and, you, and you fight through things. You know, you know what's important. Um, I think knowing what's important is also a big part of it. Um, and that's why I kind of, uh, I, I want to relay that having that mindset is important. So whether or not you have the time or the money to do, to do anything, mm. um, as long as you have it in your mind, history will bring out the leaders. History will call you or you'll have opportunities in your life and you may think they're inconsequential or they're not that important at the time. But uh, but it is important. It's important for every little thing you do, um, even just carrying yourself the right way, even just uh, raising your kids the right way to be a leader and to excel. You're showing other little kids and other families what they can do and who they can be. So. Being different is OK. <laughs> yeah, man. Being different is. Okay. Yeah. In, in all in context of everything you just said, one of the biggest things that 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 adheres to would be, man, get out and vote. Like, no doubt. like everything you're saying is, is it's in my it's in my brain. I, However you vote, vote because <laughs> because if, when we become one, we become people don't. I think his, our Hispanic culture don't understand how powerful we could be if we just got out and voted, man. Like they, no doubt, they, there's a big gap in these votes when you go to, especially these little cities. Like we're doing a lot of work in Marlin and some little cities, and you'll see the votes. They'll talk about the white vote, they'll talk about the black vote, but they the Mexican vote always is. It, and and we're we're 
33 percent what is the word the, the demographic de de demographic demographic yeah. in that yeah. area we're strong but and always our, growing always and, growing but yeah. but and, and the attention that we would get the more that they would cater to the hispanic community if we just got out and vote because then yeah. then we become a lot more important what, what's your perspective What's your take on yeah, something? Yeah, like I, I definitely agree. I think what we uh, lose sight of with that, um, you know, we it's hard to to gauge whether or not we're making a difference just by going and voting. We feel like, oh, it doesn't matter here. And there's a lot of reasons why you can find why it doesn't matter. Um, whether you feel like uh, they're not passing the laws that we want them to pass or uh, Texas is, um, you know, doing things that we can't make a difference because they hold a stronghold on or whatever. But I think what we need to remember when it comes to vote is that it was a right that was fought for by civil rights, by Mexicanos, by the African-American community, by, by the white community, everybody. They fought for these rights and voting is such a simple thing that, you know, it's such a simple right to go and exercise that, um, you know, you're not doing a service to the rest of the world and your people and your kids and the people that came before us by not just going and doing that one simple thing. That is not a difficult thing. It shouldn't even be a question as to um, should I go vote or I don't want to bother with that. You should just go get that done and then move on to something or whatever else you feel like is more is, is important also to go along with it. Our ancestors risked their lives and lost their lives. Lost for their that lives. One, for that for that opportunity yes very yes. important mm -hmm. so so thanks for for uh you know talking about like how your family navigated through the challenges you know kind of their perspective from what what you've seen and experienced i think that's important you know uh when you're doing anything in life that you have the right perspective that uh if you're doing this because of love and out of a calling you know, that uh, you feel like God has on your life a purpose, you know, for doing this. When you, you stay focused on that, it'll help you move forward and navigate through the challenges that just part natural part of being in this world, you know, is going to happen. But uh, your family navigated through all that because they accomplished great things and it didn't come without challenges, right? Oh, yeah. It, 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 it had... It was it, tough. It, 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 exactly. It had its, yeah. its, uh, but its that's, challenging that's, times. Uh, that's the beautiful struggle. Yeah. You know, and we, we look at it as that, that all of that toughness and all of that grind, um, you know, if you gain any wisdom throughout your life, you know how beautiful that is and, and how much strength that you pull from that yeah. just by going through the struggle. So it's all it's all meant to be. And it's all it, it's uh, it uh, it compounds, you know, as life goes on, you know, so it's 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 a beautiful thing. So, man, we'll we'll wrap this up. But um, what's one uh, thing that pops out in your mind as you think about um, the the tiempo or uh, the show that your mom did as well. Um, what what's one thing that just when you hear that that pops out at your mind? You know, it's just a lot of um, uh, pride. Uh, it's a lot of it's very humbling. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's just uh, you know, it's sort of a a want to do more. Mm. It's sort of a you know a uh, I say life is about reminders. You know, we we all know everything. You know, we feel like we know everything. Ah, oh, we've been through it. I know how to do that. But then you'll be reminded again, like, oh, remember, you know, you should have known that. <laughs> but uh, and and so I think it's just uh, to remember these stories and know all these stories and and hear these stories again, or all of a sudden see an old tiempo that's sitting in your house uh, that you hadn't looked at a long time. Is to remember that uh, these things were done for you and. Uh, and uh, we all have a calling, you know. It's important that we're all in this together and you do what you can uh, to better yourself so that you can uh, make the world a better place. Quick idea. I, 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 I want to go around the table. Tell me your first reaction. Tiempo, where, where would you go get the tiempo and, and how, how, how did that, how that process go usually? Oh, man, and at the restaurants and, and I mean, shoot, I, I think right what? off the top, cruises. Uh, okay. Right, that's on Eleventh Street. Uh, right Don't get all of them because if you get mine, I'm gonna be mad. You got cruises. Okay, uh, Charo. Ah, see, you cheated. I, I, I'm gonna stop. I just said two. You <laughs> asked mean, me first, bro. But I mean, I don't even know. I, I know there was temples everywhere, and, and and I love everybody. But like, 
that was we went to El Chato the day it would come out. We knew when he dropped them off that morning at ten o'clock. So me and my grandpa would be at El Chato, you know, waiting on our tiempo. Like it was clockwork. Oh, that's great. Did, did you have a? Well, I guess you just had them at the house. <laughs> sure. You know, hey, I, I, I've delivered them. You know, I, I, I put them everywhere that they went. So I, you know, I've, I've been there, done that, and there's a lot of places. But yeah, I mean, we always had us. Hey, Waco, Waco, <laughs> we Waco. always knew from the beginning. Waco, y'all help us out. Please, please tell us where you got your tiempo. I think that's important not only for for the tiempo, but also for all the places that that, that supported the tiempo at that time. Because I know we're going to have a bunch of everybody go through your list because you were going to go through a list and you still ruined mine. But go ahead. I mean, anywhere you did La Familia. I mean, you keep going. Yeah. I mean, they were everywhere, dude. You you'd find them, you know, and then they would run out, bro. Also burrito, bro. But they would run out. Oh, no doubt, bro. And and you know, you'd kind of. Try to tell the other person, hey, man, make sure you leave that right there. And they have menudo stains on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, forget COVID. Yeah. That thing had like, yeah, it had You're going to catch some elbows, yeah. bro, if you take the one. <laughs> at least let everybody read it, you know. Yeah. But but they would run out. If I'm not mistaken, H-E-B también. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they were there was H-E-B. Yeah, you know, and, and those locations evolved, too. You know, there was always um, somebody starting a new restaurant that we wanted, you know, Tiempo to be in mm-hmm. so, that, so that we could reach uh, the biggest part of the community that we could, you know. Um, so it, it moved around. Restaurants and, were vital because then, you know, you knew the traffic through there. And, and so you right. that was a smart yeah. strategic move. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, wherever we could put it, you know, the, the schools, you know, where, wherever we could get it out there, uh, we wanted everybody to know. Um, that this was for you, you know, the tiempo was free, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we, we wanted everybody to, to be able to see what was going on in your community and see your kids highlighted and, and your businesses so that we could all uh, grow. Is there any, is there any, uh, from what you know, what are some uh, a agency or uh, a business that was one of the biggest supporters from what you can remember? Oof. I mean, I know there was a ton, right? Because people lot. were, you, it was an ad agency, right? There was a lot. Um, there were a lot of businesses that um, uh, definitely um, were very loyal and uh, helped uh, the Impel thrive throughout mm. the years. Hair uh, designs was could, always in there. Yep, yep. Hair designs. Hair I'm, trying, designs. I'm trying to think, like, you what know, do I remember? Um, you know, I mean, they were just uh, individual people, yeah. you know, whether they were lawyers or uh, Tovar Taylors mm. or, um, you know, uh, uh, Los Pepe's restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, Three Hills was up. You know, Mr. Three Hills, Hills was all of the there. restaurants yeah. in, in yeah. town. Yeah. El Charro, you know, mm-hmm. that there were huge advocates uh, mm. for helping Tiempo. Um, La Fuente Ballroom. La Fuente Ballroom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. They it, were always in there big time. Yeah. The Waco oh, Missions, the, the yeah. Mojo Missions. Yeah. yeah. The Oh, and to know what was going on at the Mutualista or Come at on, the man. Missions. or That I was mean, it. That mm. was huge. That mm. was that was what, you know, that was our. Boy. That, that was your go-to. No, what, bro, what we do on Saturday. What we Hold do on, on Saturday. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to, just to know what was going on, man, it, it was... Um, Before we got on, up. even when Grandma would ask, we're going we're gonna to go to church. We didn't go to church every Sunday. So I remember we'd go to church two out of three, two out of two, maybe twice a month. And yeah. we'd go to different ones, but we didn't know what time the masses were. So mm-hmm. that was something that, that was our go-to on the times of St. Francis or, you know, the different masses would be on there. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they were even at the, uh, like at Sacred Heart, the little bitty... Uh, not the restaurant, but the fellowship hall where mm-hmm. they would sell menudo and stuff. Oh, yeah. Bro, oh, yeah. they'd yeah. be up in there, bro. Man, bro. That, you see, you're going way back. <laughs> yeah. That's way yeah. back. You know, on all of the churches, St. Francis, Sacred Heart, you know, that, I mean, there's there's a lot of churches, you know, that uh, all have been a part of this community, too, and, and helping. So we've all always been in this together. Yeah. This is yeah. big time. This, no, is, this is good. It, and this is going to require uh, more conversations, obviously. Uh, there's no way we can unpack it. As a matter of fact, uh, bro, we're gonna have to do a series just on well, the, the tempo. I want to ask for permission first. So, can can we officially call you like a team member of this no journey doubt. that we got? No doubt. Because I, I I feel I, like I feel like we need you. I, man, listen, I, this I out. appreciate you just the this sentiment. Is, this is I'm, an offer. But I, I'm with you. You know, just like my whole family has has uh, been with your family and everyone else in the community. We're we're with you in everything that you that you want to do. So we want us all to thrive. It, I, I, I it's a beautiful thing. I didn't oh, go yeah. into this thinking we were missing a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And then as we speak and 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 the the blood flowing and and through through mi corazón, I'm going to use that plug. 
uh, man, you, you, you're a piece of the puzzle that we need. And, and, and if Thanks, we're going to reach the community that. like we really oh, want yeah. to, oh, yeah. we have to become one and we got to link hands with the people that we, we got to, man. No, thank that's you. it. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say thank you very much. You know, it's very humbling. You know, we always wanted to, uh, you know, be very humble in everything that we do because uh, it's not about us. It's about everyone. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Well, th this has been a, a beautiful moment for us. Hopefully uh, you guys agree for you, for y'all out there. And, you know, we're going to continue uh, this journey and, you know, broadcasting um, things that uh, – where the past inspires and the present and we connects. can help make sure that the present connects with the past. Uh, we're going to go through there and we got, we got the blessing from the Fraga family and you got uh, a new team member. Yeah. Team <laughs> member. And, and, but there's going to be many more. We know because we're just stepping out in faith. This, this is going to continue. And uh, I'm just excited for not only this moment, but what, what's to come. And I believe there's going to be many more moments as we continue to go down this path and moving forward and, bringing some, uh, uh, how you say, uh, broadcasting uh, uh, our, our, her our heritage and the legacy, uh, the legacies of Central Texas, and I'll say beyond, right? Yeah. I I'm going to say that and beyond because I know that's that's where it's going to go at some point. Yeah. But uh, God bless you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'm just, I I'm almost speechless, bro, just about what's happening right now. History right now being well, made for, right here. For me and you, this is the dream come true, right? Yeah. It, it, this is the, the ultimate for us. We could interview a, a, a thousand people, but this interview right here to yeah. us, to, to me and my brother, as we talked and and went in faith, I can actually say that in, yeah. with pride, and we and we took this step. Uh, it, th this solidifies what we, yeah. this solidifies the moment. It stamps it. because Man, And especially it. you want to be part of the team and, and agreeing that, we have this is what it's going to take to keep moving forward. Oh, yeah, I'm with and, you and I'm, so. I, from the heart. I, I really appreciate it. And if I could leave uh, everybody with one message is to, to know that, uh, you know, you, you're a part of it, too. You know, spread this message, Man. spread these podcasts, you know, get the word out. This is what we're all here to do. The messages and the things that we're talking about, it's important. And yeah. know what's important. Know that you're important, and uh, and be the leaders. You know that we are. So keep keep. We're we're gonna grow. This is gonna grow. Oh, yeah. This is gonna be great for our community. One thing I, we, I want give your mom and dad a big hug. Please, Please do that. Your yeah. sisters, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, yeah. What what your family has done to influence Waco, Texas, uh, yes. Texas, in, 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 in the Hispanic community and and beyond that, but in our Hispanic community is so big. Yes. There's no Thank way you. we can follow, and there's no way we can copy and paste without the original copies, right? I, I can't. I can't so, thank you enough. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So more to come, as you can tell. Uh, we did. We talked about this I think last time, and brother, you, you even brought them up as far as a circle of influence for your dad. But the Motolongos are are, are going to be here. Yes, that's so that's coming up next. You don't want to miss that. And then, of course, you've heard it here, right here, live as we're recording. They we're coming together, partnering, and of course, we're going to have a series of the temple that we're going to continue to talk about. And uh, don't forget our beyond. giveaway. Oh yeah. Giveaway. We're going to give away some stuff. We got people that are excited, their own businesses. They want to come on board and help just sponsor some things. And part of those things are going to sponsor us, us giving away things to you that's in the community, which is just small, tangible ways of just saying, we love you guys. And we, we thank you for tuning in and being a part of this movement because it is not just us here, but it's, all of us together, we are the people. And so thank you for allowing us to just uh, uh, be obedient to function in the capacities that God is allowing us to function in and uh, to help be a blessing to all y'all out there and be a mouthpiece and be the heart of the Hispanic culture here in Central Texas. So yes, sir. God bless you. We'll see y'all later. Deuces.